Hi everyone, welcome back to another video, and today it's going to be something Hello different, it's going to be a everybody, hypothetical. and welcome to a collaborative video thing with si with Alice. Hello. Yeah, yeah, with with my friend Pat here. I am Pat. Uh, we are putting this on both our channels, so to your channel, hi, I'm Pat from Pat's Plays and the TBT Network and the Four Store channel. And I've been following this guy since his first video and seeing what she's doing. That's a sentence that sounds weird. Um, I just love how you <laughs> Good recovery. Uh, and uh, and as for uh, you on my channel, go ahead. Uh, you... I, I, I only looked at your channel now. I feel like an asshole. No, I, 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 Freyan, I found your music, your, uh, um, some of your videos and just kind of viewed them on and off. And then you recently made a video, uh, which, um, if you have cards, uh, on, you can put it in here right now to link to it, which was, you did a push the button video that had some Pokemon theoreticals in it. Yep. And so that gave me the idea to do some Poketheticals. And that's what this is. It's a Pokethetical video. And I have uh, 10 hypotheticals here, and you'll make some as we go and if you get any ideas. Got but, it. Uh, without any further ado, let's go. We'll start with uh, one button-styled uh, hypothetical. All right. Um, any egg you hatch has perfect IVs, but you have to train every Pokemon you hatch to level 30 without experience share or cheap switch training. So any egg I hatch every has perfect... Egg. Huh? Yep. Every egg you hatch from now on will have perfect IVs, but you have to train every egg you hatch to level 30. And not through, like... And no experience share and no cheap switch training. Damn. Well, I mean... Whenever I hatch eggs, it's either for shiny hunting or for, like, my own team. So it's a long, it's, it's going to be a long process, but if it's, the po if it's the perfect Pokemon, then, yeah, I guess I'd have to do it. I mean, it's a great, it's a great scenario. All right. Um, now we'll move on to one of the Would You Rather styled ones, and this is where I hope it gets pretty good. Um, sure. Let's start off pretty, pretty simple, okay? Would you rather have a party with only Pokemon with flying type as one of their two types or only Pokemon with water type? Hmm. Now, would this just be for like battles or just all around the whole game? Do a run with only Pokemon with flying Ooh. type or only Pokemon with water type. Can they have secondary types? Yes. Hmm. Basically, the idea of it was fly or surf. Yeah. But you do need surf eventually. It's kind or of a requirement. Pelipers. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking You're about Pelipers. You need to get a Pelipper on your team. That's, that's, that's the assistance. I prefer a Swana, thank you very much. Oh, damn. Well, it's not a fucking thing that pops up every time. Uh, I was hunting for a Meditite earlier, and I just kept getting um, Wingles. But anyways, I have to go with the flying type because, I mean, they have more advantages over lots lots of other types like fighting, grass, and bug. Also, the, the move fly does give a, a bit of an advantage for one turn. Most flying types do have a speed advantage as well. But water is also yeah. the single best monotype in the game other than electric. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, honestly, I think I would probably go with the water, but maybe that's just me coming from Owen. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, will we have access to all Pokemon from all six gens? Sure, why not? Hmm. Oh, there's Talonflame, who's really good at egg hatching. It's a fire type. There's got to be another water type I can choose around there, Swanner or Pelipper. And then... If I can get my hands on one of the legendary birds, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, so I think we have that answer. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so now we'll go on to a story scenario. Okay. So this is a personal story from when I was extremely bored. 
I had recently finished up my Nuzlocke of Ruby. And me and Nuzlocke's is a long story I'll tell you after. But um, I was walking around my kitchen having a snack, and I thought, what would I do if I got a, like, what would I do if, like, a Jirachi just suddenly showed up? I created a hypothetical where I was hanging out with a few friends, and a Jirachi showed up, and I was like, oh, shit. And I had a wish, and it was like, basically, the idea was a way to get me to have some kind of segue into me simulating what I would do in, if I were in Emerald, if I were in Hoenn and all of that stuff, but was still me. So I basically, I, I was such a, Ho I'm such a Hoenn fanboy that I played through most of Emerald just on my free time in my head. Cause I knew that I, I've memorized so much of that game that one day during my junior year in physics, uh, when people started playing uh, emulators on their phones, I actually made a screen-to-screen -screen map of Hoenn to scale. Just from like memory? 10 minutes. Yeah, man. It's awesome. Like, routes and stuff, or just the every overall route, map? Every route. Oh, god damn. Frame by frame. Yeah. That's how much I love that region. Yeah. So I, I started playing through the game, and I got around past Watson before I kind of got bored with doing it, so I kind of simulated what I would do at the end of the game. The basis for it was I have all my knowledge and I'm in the game. So you'd be pretty OP. So imagine what you would do after you've beaten the game. Like every kid's dream is to fly around in frickin' Rayquaza at some point. So you catch all the legendaries and you become insanely perfectly strong because you're only you're the only person who understands frickin' type advantages. Um, but yeah, like what would happen to you? So I ran a simulation in my head and there was a scene that played out. And it was me on an island that I had made because I had all the legendaries. And I basically simulated myself going mad with power. and all Crowd the, on making an island yep, and stuff. And all the characters got pissed off at me. So they all teamed up together to stop me. So there was May, Wally, uh, and Steven were fighting against my onslaught of all my legendaries and shit. And it was an <laughs> absolutely amazing catastrophic scene in my head. Just imagine me, like, losing my shit, cackling, and watching Steven fly around his Metagross while he fly around on his Gardevoir, and uh, um, May flying around on uh, um, on a Swellow with her Blaziken and stuff, and all of that. And eventually, I got backed up to um, my last two Pokemon. I was about to send out Latios and Latios, because they had taken out the title legendaries, and the Regis, and a few other Pokemon. And just as I was about to back up into my into my uh, Latios and Latios, everything kind of went white. And basically, Jirachi showed up and was like, gave that kind of look of, you you failed. You, you really blew this opportunity. So the way that that story ended was I wished for another try at the run to where I would actually respect the world and do it without going crazy and being an asshole. And so I did another run through of the game Less of a run of the game, but more of a run through the world. And that was much more enjoyable, and I was immersed. And I actually did a few role plays with that character and stuff like that with my friends. And uh, I called that the redemption run, was the second wish. And the third wish is a secret. <laughs> maybe maybe later I'll tell you what the third wish was. But uh, that's, that's what I did hypothetically with the Jirachi. Jesus Christ, you really went into that. Yeah, well, I mean, when I was a little kid, I made up an extremely complicated story about a Trico. Basically, how the story went was Trico was a Mew. It was complicated, and I loved it. <laughs> I love writing stories and shit. Well, Mew can learn to transform. It's, like, that was the whole concept of it. The Trico story was that a Mew was carrying an egg and was being chased by a bunch of fire and flying Pokemon through a forest at night. So she, like, dropped off the egg in a forest and just bailed because a Mew isn't supposed to have an egg. And the egg hatched as a Trico walked by and was like, what the fuck? It hatched, immediately transformed into the first thing it saw. And then that Trico bolted and got the hell out of Dodge. And then that Trico was raised as a Trico in the forest and learned a bunch of shit. But he could learn moves that weren't just grass type moves. So he had Iron Tail and Fire Blast and Synthesis and shit like that. And fight. it was basically, imagine a grass fighting psychic type. And... Um, I, I just had so many stories of Trigo learning things. and You know when you're that age of being a kid that you play Pokemon with your bodies? Like, you have play fights and shit as Pokemon? 
Uh, yeah, I have a story. That was about what that I always too. did. I was Trico. And uh, I had a bunch of crazy moves. I actually, to this day, I'm still proud of this. I made up my own move. I called it Solar Seed. Basically, imagine Solar Beam mixed with Bullet Seed. So it's a two to three hit move. And each one is a, a half the power of a Solar Beam. A um, 60? Yeah, like a base 60, two to three hit move. It was awesome. <laughs> I loved it. Because the idea, the visual image in my head was... Awesome stuff. <laughs> that was around the time I was watching the Gen 3 anime, too. Ah. Yeah. I watched the Gen 3 anime and a bit of the Gen 4 anime before it stopped. My favorite generation was 4, just because I played oh, at the time. Oh, man. Contests in Ash. Okay. If I ever get a podcast with this guy I, i've been waiting forever to get podcasts with him he's my old friend from the Silphgo pokemon collab channel his name is high voltage and he told me a story of basically he caught me up on what happened with the anime in gen 4 and he said that ash was supposed to win that contest like he literally would have won if it weren't for them fucking him over like the directors of the show because they had him fight in semifinals a dude with a dark rye and he used his whole team, but he was actually able to be the only person in the entire tournament to actually beat the Darkrai. And then he had a Latios. This so, is the Elite Four? No, no, no. The, the Pokemon League tournament that they do in the anime. Mm. Ash has never won one of them. The only tournament he's ever won was the Orange Islands. I've never really, like, no, this is all stuff looking to the finals. Him. Ah. Yeah. So the idea was, like, you can't ever let Ash win because then his journey would stop. So they have to make him lose every time. But they had built Ash to be so overpowered in the Gen 4 anime that they had to use legendaries to stop him. That is why Gen 4 will always be the one where Ash was cool. <laughs> is what I say. Well, uh, yeah. So I did you, watch the anime Gen 4. Hmm? So you got any... Also, the anime made coordinators. That, that was amazing. Coordinators. Um, yeah, they turned contests into its own thing. It was amazing. Oh, um, that. Yeah, man. I... The female, the female trainers, coordinator rivals, were some of the best characters ever introduced to the show. Dawn's rivals? Uh, well, Dawn and May's rivals. They were amazing. May was in the anime? Yeah. Huh. May, and Bren May and Brendan? Uh, uh, point being, I... this is not the Pokemon channel. Let's, let's get back to the uh, Pokethetics, I guess. Okay. So, did any of those give you any ideas, or should I keep going down the list? Well, I haven't written down any, but I suppose I can think of one. Give me a second. Hmm. Oh, wow, that was a tangent. That was a tangent. Okay. It's okay, though. Tangent. Okay. All right. I, I think this might be a good one. If you could completely, like, remove one type of Pokemon, what would it be? If I had to, let's rephrase it to that. Like, make it more higher stakes. Sure. Yeah, yeah. All right. If I had to remove one type. Had to. I think it would be rock or ground. Um, mm. Like, there are a lot of cool ground Pokemon, but, like, I was looking a few years ago to make a ground, uh, to make, put a ground type to my team, and ground is, like, one of the least populated types. If you take out the rock ground types... If you look at pure ground types, I think they're the least common pure type. Because it's like, they're one that of the most forgettable types. Hippowdown was cool, but who remembers them? The ones that come off the top of my head are Sandshrew and Diglett and stuff like that. Yeah, like, Sandshrew, Sandslash, they're cool, but they're not the best designs. Diglett and Dugdrio don't get me started. They're just Hippowdown, a meme. Hippowdown is a... Is a it's a hippo in a desert. It's it's, it's really very, powerful though. Yeah, ground types have some of the coolest are some of the coolest Pokemon. Diggersby and Drillbur and Excadrill and oh, Garchomp. Good God. They're some of the coolest <gasps> oh they're some God, of the coolest right. Pokemon. But they're some of the least inspired designs. Ground type is just very underwhelming. Um I uh, like I don't know, um every other type is so itself. Dragons are so dragon, ice are so ice. Flying are so flying, and normal are so normal. How would but you consider fairies, though? Fairies are very fairy. 
And I'm well, there's yeah, yeah. Like if I said fairy, it would be the easy answer, you know. Would you? Okay, one thing I was hung over when they introduced fairy types is Snubble and its evolution. Is that really a? They fairy were type? they were considered the fairy Pokemon. That was their Pokedex entry. Really? Yep. But they look so. Or something. I I think it was because they were in the fairy egg group. But point being is that their Eastern inspiration had to do with fairies. Mm, okay. Had to do with Faye. F A E. Yeah, I know about Faye. Yeah. Oh, that's stuff. That's a wormhole. Monsters, uh, mythology, and all that. That I can talk about for a long time. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, I'll go with one now because I, I guess I say either most likely ground, but maybe rock. Um, Mine would have to be rock because I mean, most people kind of forget fairy, that what fairy I kind of have been weak to rock. Fairy should have been weak to rock. How so? Think about it. If you hit a fairy, look at every single fairy type. Every single fairy type, when you look at them, they should be weak to rocks. Just, just imagine it. Like, no Pokemon would be like, what the fuck, ow, more than a fairy type if you hit it with a rock. Banging a cleft key with a rock is what I'm imagining. Well, I mean, it would be neutral. Because of steel type. Okay, yeah, that, that that's But true. like, a Gardevoir, a, um, a Sylveon... A flabebe should get destroyed by a <laughs> <laughs> I, it Really? A rock should completely decimate a flabebe. Eight times super effective. I think a flabebe should be weak to fire because it's on that, like, on a plant, but fairy types but are, like, least, half resistant it, to fire? Or no, it... no, fire's resistant to fairy types, so you got your wish there. Ah. Okay. Uh, and, and wait, did I say fire? Fire is resistant to fairy. That's why Infernape is neutral against fairies. Fairies do neutral uh, damage to Infernape. Um, and all the other firefightings. Uh, Gen 3 through Gen 5 was all fighting fi um, fire type stars. Well, that was because of the Chinese uh, Chinese Zodiac thing. You really do a lot of research. Yeah, um, well, Charizard was a dragon. And uh, uh, I think Typhlosion was the rat. Blaziken was the, was the rooster. Uh, Infernape was the monkey, and I'm guessing, and that was the boar, and then it was the fox. So you can actually predict what the Gen Seven Fire Starter will be. The Grass Starters go through biological evolution, starting with uh, early plants, and then reptiles and mammals and all that stuff. Uh, I think that's a popular theory. I think that one actually is actually deconfirmed by um, one of them, but it makes a lot of sense when you look like chestnut and stuff like that um they're basically based off mammals uh mammals or, uh, or reptiles or something that evol through history and water types are based on amphibians they're always pokemon they're always based off creatures who are not live their entire year lives in water alligators penguins you get the point oh yeah yep so back to the pokatheticals button styled number two 50% shiny encounter rate flat from one from the normal like for every pokemon you encounter 50% chance to be a shiny but what i do is but 50% horde battle encounter rate with 50% less chance to escape from horde battles so basically half the time you encounter a pokemon it'll be a shiny but half the time you encounter a pokemon it'll be a horde battle that you, it will be difficult to run from Basically meaning that your t adventure will last a long, long, tedious time. Well, the thing about shinies is that if you get one, it's, like, really special. And if it's, like, one you personally get, it's even more special. Making it a 50% rate would make it, like, unpopular in that, that, in that case. That is the correct like... answer, my friend. That is the correct answer. Upping the rate of shinies in Gen well, 6 then. made shinies... Not not special. Shinies aren't special anymore with Wonder Trade and all that. But that was Nintendo's way of saying, like, we want people to stop hacking Pokemon, so we'll just uh, make it very easy for everyone to get the exact Pokemon they want. My first Shiny was in Gen 6, actually. It, think of how many people can say that, because they upped the Shiny rate based on how many times you tip people. Tip people? Yeah. That's, that's how it works? Yup. The more you tip, the higher Shiny rate is. Better get the tipping. 
the, the, my my first shiny was last year on New Year's Eve. I hatched a shiny Porygon, and now I have a shiny. Oh, that's Porygon. a kick-ass one! Thank you. On my competitive team, I have two Porygons: a Porygon Z that's Focus Sash, Agility, Nasty Plot, Shadow Ball, Adaptability, um, uh, Tri Attack. Tri Attack Adaptability is my run too. And I also have an Eviolite Porygon too. Eviolite. Eviolite is a move that can is an item that only goes on not fully evolved Pokemon, and so it, you, it gives you, them plus one po- times one point five to both defenses. So you put on a Porygon. Uh, you put on a Porygon two because yeah. Porygon two and Porygon Z actually don't have different stat totals; they, they just get did. shifted. So Porygon two is the only Pokemon that's a fully evolved Pokemon that can gain from Eviolite because Porygon Z was made way later. Jesus. Two generations later. So you go from having 90 in both defenses to 135 in both defenses with access to recover. <laughs> it's a good Pokemon. Okay. And it only has one weakness. But I run conversion to turn into an electric type. So sometimes I'll trace in, I'll switch in, trace levitate, convert to electric type, use charge beam, and recover so I have no weaknesses. And base 135 in both defenses. God damn. It takes a long time to beat. It only fails against steel types because toxic and uh, and uh, charge beam don't work well against them. Porygon Z actually has 20 plus more base stats. Um, oh, that was a Gen 6 edition. In Gen 6, they made it stronger. Ah. Just like they did with all sorts of Pokemon. Hmm. Okay, well. so... Um, well, would you rather number two? It's very simple. Mock bike or acro bike? Remind me which does which. Mock bike sorry. goes really, really fast and can cross over cracks in the floor that fall out, and it can make jumps. Okay. And the acro bike can pop a kick-ass wheelie and uh, do bunny hops forever. And it can also make you ride across railings um, and hop across stones and rivers. Yeah, Acrobike. Correct answer. <laughs> Acrobike is so kick-ass. You can bunny hop your way through the whole game. I yeah. just want to get like all those um, secret TMs from the railings and stuff. Yeah, thing is, is that there are just as many uh, from the railings as there are from the uh, sand pits. But we all know in the real in the oh. real Pokemon world. I mean, you, you could probably cl- no. Actually, honestly, like when you think about the Pokemon worlds as a ten-year-old. And in more recent history, older than that, those ledges are probably impossible to climb up. Everyone complains that's just a two-inch ledge. It's the size of you, and when you're ten, there's no climbing up that thing. And as for those sand pits, like theoretically, think about it. If you saw a twenty-five foot tall sand slide, you would need a really fast bike to get up that thing. There is no way you're getting up it otherwise. But thanks to Gen 6, you can see that it's like half your height. Yeah, but that's all That's all in a chipified world. That is true, and that is a different um, alternate reality, as mm-hmm. Shana, no, Zinnia explains. Um, no, no, Zinnia's referring... You don't know. The world Zinnia is referring to yeah. is a world without Mega Evolution. Zinnia refers to... Um, the original. The original generation, uh, 1 yeah. through 5. Yeah. Um, the thing about the Chibi world is it's just, it's just a lens through which you see the world. The full body models you see in battles uh, are actually how the world looks. Hmm. And everything you see on the well overworld is uh, a lot like traditional 90s and early 2000s RPGs where it has like a chibified overworld and then an actual world you see through the battles. I have to agree with you there. Mm-hmm. It's why I run a Pokemon channel, bro. A purely talking Pokemon channel with no Let's Plays yet. Well, <laughs> my my channel isn't exactly all Pokemon. Even 1% Pokemon, but mm-hmm. yeah. What was your first generation? My first generation was Fire Red, so Kanto. Why does everyone start with Fire Red? Everyone misses out on the goodness that is Hoenn. Because that's just... That's actually the first time I got a Game Boy. And yeah, but you want to know something, man? What? Right. 
Alice, what you need to know is that... <laughs> oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> no, I don't worry about it. I just try to kind of catch myself. Okay. Um, honestly, I do not stress over it because I know that that's more annoying than not. Um, I know more Gen 1ers that are 13 than that are 21 because of Fire Red. <laughs> Fuck that. I, I hate that game, not for what it is, but for what it did. It turns so many kids into Gen 1ers who only play Fire Red. I played Emerald too. I know, I know. And you're, you're not a Gen 1er. But I know so many kids who are Gen 1ers who are way younger than me. Because they started <laughs> on Fire Red. It's like, you should have started on Diamond at your age. <sighs> when I started Diamond, no, Pearl. I remember those days. That was so great. Yeah, it was, it was a good... Diamond and Pearl were were proper sequels to Emerald in the way that uh, so, uh that Silver and Gold were good sequels to the first game. I've it actually was a natural never, progression. I never played a Gen two game. What? You do know that Heart Gold and Soul Silver are the best Pokemon games ever created, right? For raw <laughs> gameplay. I've never played a Gen two game. No. You should do a let's play. Uh, Get an emulator. Maybe. Do it. Do a challenge run. <laughs> anyway, um, all right. So, scenario number two. What trainer class or job would you love to have in the Pokemon world? I would be a breeder. All the way. I'm trying to think between breeder, ace trainer, or elite four person. Let's let's cross out elite fours and gym leaders for this. Just an everyday person. Everyday person. So no ace trainers or uh, those still be count? an ace trainer because there's a diamond dozen ace trainers. Yeah, that's true. I have a video on my channel um, uh, called the Versus Seeker, which is our trainer life show, and on that we talk about the soci the socio cultural implications of trainer classes. And that it's a giant cosplay culture turned into a dystopia. And that it's like a full, like it, it's, it, it'll blow your mind, man. It, it, it was so amazing to talk about with, with my friend Swift. Well then, if, <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but I suppose I would have to go with Ace Trainer because I just love battling so much. Breeding is okay. Like I learned how to breed through Gen 6 because of, yeah, how quickly that picked up and everything. Mm -hmm. Before, I thought it was complicated, and thanks to, like, I liked it complicated. I Here's the thing that Gen <laughs> 6 ruined. Gen 6 made it able for both males and females to pass down moves, and also made TMs and HMs, it made TMs able to be used in an infinite amount of times. I both of like those that. are good things, but they have hard implications for breeding. Because of how streamlined everything got, male Pokemon are, like, the least... U useful Pokemon ever. If you get a Pokemon that's male, you're like, well, fuck. Because female Pokemon used to just only be able to create the Pokemon of their species and um, and they could um, pass, down, pass down natures and sometimes mm -hmm. abilities and stuff like that. The males pass down TMs and egg moves. Back then, passing down a TM was so... Powerful. It was amazing. And male Pokemon were just as important, maybe more important than females. Now, females are literally just four times better than male Pokemon. Because they can do everything males can, as well as pass down natures and, and abilities. It's so awful. But otherwise, other than that, breeding is just an amazing job when you think about it in terms of an actual roleplay world instead of the games. Because it's like... That's a hell of a good di good gig when there's all these competitive people running around. Like, in an MMO, a breeder would be a very lucrative job. And it'd also just be really fun and cool. Oh, yeah. I just Think can't wait to, like... a shiny, like, on accident in an MMO or in a virtual reality world. You'd be like, holy shit. Plus, you would spend more time with Pokemon than trainers would. Because... You spend day and night, 24-7, with all kinds of Pokemon. And imagine the secrets you would uncover. You'd, just, you'd have so much information. 
What if you accidentally step on a flabebe, though? Um, well, flabebes, basically, you would have a system in play. It would be like Jumanji. You'd be like, okay, that's where we have those. That's where we have those. This fence goes here. Every 20 minutes, I have to turn on the faucet to melt the, to uh, spray uh, the sprinklers on the on the um, slugma so that they don't eat through the fences. Got to like, make sure that the alakazams stay away from the vanillics. I would not have fully grown alakazams in a daycare. <laughs> it's for babies and teens. That is what it's for. And dittos. And a lot, a lot of dittos. Or just one ditto. I can't wait to be a Pokemon um, breeder to have to, like, put on gloves and pry my way through a mess of dittos and, like, mucks or other things. Well, Find the, the egg Poke somewhere in the middle for. of that. The Poke Flute is, like, is like the the poke flute is like the whistle in pikmin the poke flute has only one use that's in the games think about it in real life a flute that can make a snorlax wake up would it's literally mind control for pokemon because pokemon are way way more evolved than animals but there are many things that make pokemon act like animals and the poke flute would literally just like it would be like using sense to direct bees to go to a certain place. Like, it just tricks all their systems. Not the bees again. <laughs> but if you had a Poke Flute, you could probably find the tune that makes each Pokemon do whatever you want to do. I wouldn't be a big fan of that, but sometimes you need order when you're training a bunch of kids. That's true. I really wish the Arceus Flute was the same as the Poke Flute. The, uh... Just the Azur flute? Oh, that. Yeah. Sorry, it's been years since I played DP. Yeah, Azur flute, Eon flute, yada yada yada. Mm. All right, so next. When you think about it, just like Mew, Arceus is basically a Pokemon you can only get through cheats. Well, literally, yeah. yeah. Um, and that one event. And do you know about the Shinto ruins? No, don't think so. Make a note uh, on somewhere for us to talk about later without interrupting your capture. Okay. So, uh, my allergies are acting up from something. I think it's this chair. Uh, we used to have a dog, and I'm still allergic after all this time. Because um, I've been in college, and I've been out of this room forever. Um, okay. In your next run, this is a button styled. You get to have a Pokemon follow behind you in your next run of a Pokemon game. Just like in Hard Gold and Soul Silver, and in Pokemon Yellow, and in... Uh, those certain other places where you can have Pokemon follow you in Gen 4. You can have Pokemon fall behind you your whole run. Amazing. But it's one Pokemon, just like Pikachu, and it has to be in your party the whole time, and it's a piece of shit that annoys the hell out of you. How does it annoy me? Fee. Navi. Oh. Something like that. Just this smug thing that will stop your forward m momentum and open up a dialogue box and have an image or something and just mess with you or take stuff out of your bag and throw it on the ground i was going to say guard trump at first but then like he could just learn dig and burrow his way beneath me and then pop up in front of me yeah um, would you do it would you have a run with a pokemon falling behind you but it's a total piece of just a just a dick just an asshole that always messes with you Literally picking your up your items and throwing them out onto the road, and there's suddenly just Pokeballs po popping up everywhere. As long as he doesn't throw away my Master Ball. <laughs> I wouldn't even be too sure about that. He would totally just take it and just be like, I don't know. But hey, like, hey, bro, I accidentally caught this Pikachu over here with your Master Ball. Isn't that great? <laughs> wow, think about a Pokemon catching a Pokemon on accident. Well, I mean, there's so many different ways to think about Pokeballs. I like to think about Pokeballs through the uh, Pokemon Special Adventures manga, where there's nothing complicated. A Pokeball is literally just a device that shrinks a Pokemon. In, in the manga, in red and all the manga from there on, here's what a Pokeball does. You throw it, it there's a puff of smoke, then it catches it, then it wobbles for a bit, and then if it catches, you pick it up and there's literally a chibi tiny version of the pokemon inside it just in it like no 
digital crazy storage or whatever. It's ju just literally caught in the equivalent of an of a cage, but it's comfortabler and it's tiny, and they can pop out at any time. By the your problem command. with that. The problem with that is that, um, bit of a spoiler. Uh, during I think the yellow arc, one of the elite four, who is fighting red, like, uh, spoiler, the elite four are bad. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> actually damages one of his pokeballs, and a Pokemon can escape from it. Like that, like it, it does eventually, but like, it, like those pokeballs, like there's a theory that you can't get them out if you damage the seal or something so that's dangerous but otherwise i like the fact that you can't keep a pokemon in a pokeball forever and that he can get out at any time it wants to because think about it I like that why would a pokemon too. be able to get out during catching but not afterwards if the pokemon can hmm. shake itself out of the pokeball then what's different after the button beeps there's also it likes you. If you ever find a, a Nuzlocke comic by someone called Wasser Bien Shen called In Black and White, it is the most depressing thing you can read because it's like hyper realistic and made from the perspective of a crackpot like a uh, conspiracy theorist. And Pokeballs are like weird mind control -y things and breeders. Like, like it's a fucked up. It, like it's basically you remember that PETA game? Imagine that mixed with a Nuzlocke run. There are lots of PETA like games. Like, Blood I'm and Death. With. Like, Wasser Bien Shen's Nuzlocke ah. comic, the gym leaders literally have a pile of the Pokemon that they use. And whenever and Pokemon win when they kill each other. So when uh, you beat a gym leader, they're like, well done. Here's a badge. Sweep the floor. Next, pops out another Linoon. Yay. That is a dark, depressing comic, and I suggest you read it if only if you want nightmares and to cry a lot. Clean off the blood, make fur coats. It's awful. It's, uh, I mean, it's great. It's wonderfully written and everything, even if it, they never finished it, but whew, it's a hard read. Damn. It goes to show why I hate Nuzlocke's. Um, okay, would you rather number three? Which is, actually, I have to send links, and we can put these uh, images into the video. So, would you rather have Pokemon look like this, or this, in your next run? Well, I'm just recording my whole screen, so I can do both. Oh, I've seen those. Tim Burton's Tim Burton fun ones. things. Or, the next link. Yeah, I've seen those before. Someone got a tattoo of the Charmander, like, off, off yeah. the I saw that somewhere. And the next one is loading up. Oh god, Weedle just looks so creepy. Hey, there's a Charmander. Or would they <sighs> okay, ra would you rather it. them look Tim Burton oh, or hyper realistic? I yeah, I see that now. Espeon, why? They're literally just like <laughs> animals. Is that supposed to be an Omanyte in the back? The and then fuck? there's a Mewtwo all the way on the right, and that big red thing is a Groudon. This is a... I thought it was a Tyrantrum. And the big birdie thing is a Reshiram. I can see that. I want to see its Look tail. at Dragonite! <laughs> Look at Dragonite! <laughs> no thanks. Oh god. Larvestas look creepier, at least. So no, pick your poison. I'd rather take Tim Burton easily. I'd go with the hyperlistic just for one run. It would be so cool. Tim Burton's a little bit creepy, but also it look the Squirtle just looks a little cute. But yeah, then... but imagine their animated sprites popping up and bumping up and down. They would like, ugh, it'd be pretty creepy. Also, I have no idea what a curly or a tail would look like. Wait a second, is that- No, Garchomp, why? It's like a fucking hammerhead. It's a hammerhead shark with wings. Uh, War Turtle looks so stupid. It looks like it has algae growing on it. Right. Natu just looks painted on. 
God. Elite Four member you'd most and least like to work alongside? I just want to point out Diglett looks really stupid. <laughs> I know. Just. Well, at least he has arms. Good for him. So, um, elite Four member you'd most and least like to work alongside. I'm going to have to pull this up a, a list of. This is a personality based one of just like who would be a great person to work alongside and who would be an asshole to live your life live your life near like in terms of roommates which elite member would make the best and worst roommate <laughs> okay do champions count no just the qua- uh, just the uh, quartets got it okay these are not these are not a fish are they no yeah I think they are. Okay, yeah, they, they do seem official. Okay. Um, yeah, pr- pretty good. So, uh, looking at all of them. Oh, this also includes some gym leaders. Shit. What are you looking at? A uh, whole, like, picture of all the Elite Four and also apparently some gym leaders on here. Hmm. <sighs> Champions don't count. God damn it, Cynthia's out of the way. Well, he seems like a pretty chill guy, so I'm going to have to go with What's-His-Face from uh, Kanto, no, not Kanto, um, Kalos, the the blue, the yeah, water. Oh, um, uh, oh, fuck, the chef. Um, yeah, the chef. Uh, he has a cool name. He, his philosophy on Pokemon battles is one of my favorite things ever. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, Colosian? Uh, is a C something? Look, look it up. Um, I'm looking it up. His his opening question was cool. I actually like stopped to read it. And it was like it. It's such a good philosophy on Pokemon. Gen six had such great characters. Why did they fuck it up? <laughs> Sibold, Sabold. Ah, oh, Sabold. Sabold was great. Sable. And Wolfric was the best is just the best gym leader ever. Wolfric. Wolfric. You mean oh the ice gym leader. Oh yeah. Yeah, because I loved him since he, he literally was like, he was he was you go on. He literally says I could be your toughest opponent yet or a complete pushover based on the Pokemon you have from your journey. That's literally what Ice is. I and just I, I like how he was in the Pokemon village like yes. like helping the little tiny abuse Pokemon. I know. He's such a good gym leader. He's literally like, I would be fine if he were the champion. Oh my god. Such uh, a good gym leader. Uh, he was amazing. Among so many bad gym leaders in that game. I'm going to look up the gym leaders now. Um. So who do you think would be your least, like who would not be a good roommate among the Elite Four members? <sighs> Among the Elite Four members who would not be a good roommate. I think Will would be a bit annoying. Will? Which gen? Uh, Will's from Gen 2, but also... Oh, yeah, I wouldn't know. Um, the psychic type uh, from Gen 4... No, the fire... Flint. Flint would be a... Flint would be too much to handle. Flint... Oh, my God. Flint would be like having Barry as a roommate. <clears throat> I remember him from somewhere. Flint was the uh, Gen 5, Gen 4, was... or Gen 4 fire type. Yeah, but, like, he's... I can't put an image in my head, but I remember the name. Yeah, he has a... Just... He's, he's got ginger hair. Oh, I misspelled Sinnoh. My favorite. Oh, yeah, yeah. now I... I think Karen would be the best, because Karen seems like... Karen has such a great philosophy... But she's also a little normal, so she won't get too. You mean the like, ground type from Gen Four? No, uh, dark type from Gen Two. The, uh, um, the one that has that quote. Again, we not know anything Gen Two. Look up Karen quote. Got it. Elite Four. But I do have my um, least favorite one. I'd be with. Go ahead. Whatever his name is, bug type from Gen Four. Oh, Aaron! <laughs> Aaron. Dude, his Vespaquin probably gave you the shits. Uh, just... Vespaquin's a bit difficult, and his Drapion wrecks your house because it's... Oh my god, Drapion's so good. He also just looks a little weird. 
<laughs> Aaron's a bit funny. Uh, just his his hair is a is a blade of grass. <laughs> have you have you looked up Karen's quote? Uh, how do you spell it? Karen with a K. K A R E N. Yeah. Strong Pokemon, weak Pokemon. That is the only fault of trainers. A strong Pokemon, Pokemon we, as ahead, the only it. selfish perception of people. Truly skilled trainers should try to win with their favorites. That is what Gen 2 well, was all about. Let me give you a bit of a, a education on what Gen 2 was. I actually have a post um, uh, on Pokemino, if you find it, uh, about I did an analysis of all of Gen of all of the generations related uh, to from the games to their manga and what each generation stands for. Circled around, uh, pointed around Gen 3. Generation 1 is about power and th like that's it it's about winning you can't win you can't lose you win you're red you beat everyone and you beat the game you get the strongest pokemon and you win there's yeah. not a lot of plot to it like th that is the goal is to catch all the pokemon and to win completionist victory well red generation is red two generation two gold and silver crystal is about friendship and empathy it is about it, it's ba the whole thing it's like your rival learns over time that the reason why he loses to you is because he treats his pokemon poorly and after he goes away forever and then comes back in victory road he has a full team of fully evolved badass high level pokemon and gives you a run for your money and why is he so strong now because he starts to care for his pokemon Claire, the eighth gym leader, a dragon gym leader, the sister or cousin of freaking. Why, why am I blanking on his name? Hmm. Why am I blanking on the champion's name? Lance. Rel a relative to Lance. Super powerful girl. Can't pass a simple test from an elder in, dragon, in the dragon's lair care, cave, whatever it's called. You go in and this. Elder goes up to you and, and gives you the quiz. You care... Oh, my God. Gen 2 is about so much maturity and all these things. Gen 2 has the most situations of gym leaders who will not just give you the badge. Whitney, you have to take a few steps aside, and then a person goes up to her, consoles her, and then she gives you the badge. You have to cure a sick Amparos to get the badge. You have to... You beat, Claire, you beat Claire, and she's like, no, I'm not giving you this badge. You're not better than me. Here, go take this quiz. Go take this test. And you pass the test because you want to know what the test is? One, one, one question. What are Pokemon to you? Tools, allies, partners, weapons, like uh, some kind of statement like that. And then you pick your answer, and he's like, Correct. Claire throws a fit, gives you the badge, and storms off and disappears. And the, the elder turns to you and is like, you're the only one who's gotten that right from, like, the past 20 people. It's a whole... The whole world is all these people from Gen 1 who just try to battle. And you're this embodiment of friendship and immersion and empathy, and nobody understands what you're doing except a few people, except the elders, except Karen. And they're all like, you win because you're f friends with your Pokemon. And they introduce an aspect where your Pokemon can literally get stronger from friendship and evolve. That is why Gen 2 is so amazing. It turns Gen 1 on its head. Gen 3 is about adventure and childishness. Gen 4 is about uh, inf knowledge and responsibility. Gen 5 is, is self-centered. About I don't know what really Gen 5 and Gen 6 stand for. but I never really liked Gen 5. Yeah, it's like Gens 1 through 4 have clear things. Gen 3 is about childishness, childishness and adventure. You freaking fight pirates, explore sunken ships, and find ancient ruins. But Gen 4 is about maturity and responsibility and information. Your job is to save the world. You're not adventuring and happening to save the world as you do a bunch of fun shit. Someone is literally going... Yeah, yes, Magma and Aqua were going to destroy the world. But they didn't 
really understand it. The boss is an adult in Gen 4, and they want to kill everyone. Cyrus' theme was one of my favorites Cyrus ever. Cyrus is such an amazing character because he's different from everyone else. He's like, he is dangerous because he knows what he's doing. And it is your job to stop him. You don't want to stop him. You have to stop him. And you have to go through extreme lengths to get information, to learn, to use history, and mature to fight him. And this is through the manga as well. Like, ah, oh man, I could talk about that forever. Anyway, um, that's, uh, that's it for my stuff. What do you got for Pokatheticals? <laughs> I just came up with another one. Um, although, since this is coming on to an hour, I'm not sure how long you tend to do the videos. Done, but but I, I, I have podcasts, so mine are long format. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, which of the gym leaders would you... Pick two instead, because there's so many. Um, would you love to like room with and hate to room with? I got okay. the one I'd hate the most. Um, a lot of Gen two from gym Sinnoh. Really suck. Well, from Sinnoh, I hate to room with Crash Awake because <laughs> that would he's, suck. He's so fucking loud. Imagine him as a teenager with his posters, doing like squat thrusts every morning. Uh, I can imagine with a polyrath, like trying to do push-ups or something. It would be a poly world. Uh, whatever. God. Uh-huh. I'm trying to think of the second one I hate the most. But uh, from from like from Sino, there was a bit that I, there. Some of them I like, like Volkner. He was really cool. Would In be the anime, though. I would not like. Because Candice is a bit of a bitch. She's not nice. She's she's pretty damn cold. Hmm. Candice always made it <clears throat> made me think of like a character from Avatar, The Last Airbender. Something like about her. Design. The Fire Princesses, you mean? Well, no, not not like a character from there, but someone who would fit into that world, just with her Eastern inspiration yeah. and her martial arts and her duty with the ruins and all of that. Malayne she has a freaking lop honey. It's the and an infernape. The Why does Malayne's an ice death trainer have an infernape? Go I ahead. I think you might be thinking Malayne. Huh? No, Candid. Can... Oh well, no, I fought her yeah. with an infernape. But she does have a lop bunny. She has a medicham. And I think a lop bunny and at least platinum or something. Let me look at the thing. Uh, I, I I guess I, I suppose I'm getting it wrong. Um. But... Pretty sure you're thinking of Melane probably because she is um, the fighting type. No, Melane has I, an Melane infernape. is an actual. Melane's a great person because she's so young and she actually exhibits it. Um, I can't find any Lopernies anywhere. Another person I hate, I would hate to roommate, is Gen Six Flannery. What did they do with her design? Oh my God, Flannery was Gen such a good six. character, but then they made her into this weird. Screaming! Oh yeah, the uh, really hip, <laughs> hip. I'm active. Let's go. Let, let's. I'm fired up. Yeah, they improved <laughs> Wally so much, but they ruined Flannery. Yeah. Flannery was supposed to. I'm be just gonna a say, teacher, I wouldn't want like a like a grown young woman dealing with. Go ahead. Dependent and stuff. Yeah, I remember Flannery from Emerald. So but I'd hate to room with my dad. You know. Oh, that would be so awful. Oh my god. And I've read the manga, so I've seen a side of Norman. Roxanne, oh, though, she'd be like a bitch to room with. Because she's oh, like a yeah. rap student or something. Especially Gen 6 Roxanne. Oh god, yeah, that design. Uh, No, I mean, it's a wonderful design, but like, yeah, you know, it makes you want to hate her a bit. Yeah, the, the way she poses, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Also, the lass and schoolgirl and all those designs from Gen 6 are extremely sassy. Yeah. Um, One gym leader I wouldn't hate to room with, but it'd be awkward, is Gardenia. Because in the anime, you'd always she'd always be tripping over plant-type Pokemon, hugging them and shit. <laughs> hugging yeah. a cacturn like it's no big deal. Well, I mean, if you know how to hug it. <sighs> I've seen so many Pokemon theory videos. Like, uh, what's his name? Not Magmar, but like 
slugma. It's like body is like 3,000 degrees. and Fuck you the, the Gen 1 Pokedex, <laughs> Gen 2 Pokedex, and Gen 3 Pokedex. Fuck the Pokedex, okay? <laughs> Ignore that shit. Fuck the Pokedex in general. Mostly, like 30% of the Pokedex is p- proper. <laughs> Uh, it, it's just funny. Listen, Gen 1, never trust a Gen 1 Pokedex. Never even look at them. It says that Ponyta can, it said that Ponyta can jump over the Eiffel Tower. Tower. There is no Eiffel Tower. It's a Prism Tower. <laughs> Let's just look Freaking at all African the... elephants. <laughs> uh, the Lumios Tower. Is that what it's called? It just looks... It looks so much cheap to me. I don't know. Well, I don't know, man. Um, well, generation one. I'm trying to, I'm trying to like think of like shitty Pokedex things. Every one of them. Let's look up. Let's look up Doug Trio. Oh God, I don't even know what Doug Trio's Pokedex entry is. Um, as for me, Pokedex I mean, entry. There's so from... many I would love to be with, a room with. Um. Well, it has different entries from Fire Red and from Red. Um, yeah, you do that while I think. A team of Diglett triplets. It triggers huge earthquakes by burrowing 60 miles underground. Yeah, that's stupid. In battle, it digs through the ground and strikes unsuspecting foe from an unexpected direction. Stupid. Back then, Pokemon were named... Pokemon, Pokemon were like one move was that Pokemon. This Pokemon throws rocks. It has rock throw. This Pokemon digs holes. It has dig. This Pokemon shoots water. It has water gun. But it was Gen 1. You know, it's, if, who, who's going to complain about it more? Um, it's so weird to there's think. There's so many great... Like, Morty would be a kick-ass roommate. Morty? Yeah, Gen- oh, Gen 2. <laughs> uh, Gen 2 ghost-type trainer has two Gengar. Morty, I he looks like he has a banana on his head. He is the second... Gym leader that you fight, I think, or third. No, he's fourth. Third. Fourth. Fourth. Bugsy. No, Faulkner. Bugsy. Faulkner. Bugsy. Whitney. Morty. Whitney. Morty. Yeah. Morty is great though. He has under leveled, uh, um, Gengar that are just like they will fuck your shit up. But he can see the future. He literally does. It's amazing. That's a kick-ass I'm roommate. Kind of want to play that now. You play it on the channel. But I, it takes so long. Oh, I, yeah. I have you, school and shit. I understand. Uh, I understand. But, like, on and off, play it. Because, okay. uh, I mean, it's both the shortest Pokemon game and the longest Pokemon game. I would like, I, I am interested in battling Red at the end, though. I would say that. That will, l- listen, I beat the first half of Silver on an emulator, like, Game Boy Silver. Um, in three days. It huh. took me a month and a half to beat the rest of the game. Huh. Well, well not, then. N- not really, but, like, I stopped. Like, it would have taken a bit more or just as long. So, you know. Yeah. It takes a while to beat the full game. And especially in the remakes. Um, any other hypotheticals? Pokotheticals? Book- Maybe more button styled ones or would you rather? Mm, well, there is one I have been thinking about. Go ahead. It, it is a pretty simple one, though, but would you make Unknown more powerful so that I can learn more moves? I would make Unknown more powerful, I think. I think that they deserve a, a bit more. Because like, Unknowns are like cool, they're mysterious and everything, but it, it just sucks how they only know one move. Unknown Gen Four really brought Unknown to its pride because uh, they the gave you capsules. Rinse. They gave you capsules from the Unknown that you got. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Pokemon oh Capsule my god, that's what I love so much about Gen Four. Oh my god, yes, I love Gen Pokemon 4. Capsules. When they remake Gen Four, mm. I want to remake a Gen Four so much. We're gonna get it. Don't worry. Uh, like I was excited uh, over a Gen Three remake because I'm a Gen Three guy. And because I love replaying Gen 3, but I hate replaying Gen 3 with the old mechanics. P- playing Gen 3 with the new mechanics, it was absolutely amazing. 
but we all know Gen 4 was the best generation. Oh, and I cannot wait for Gen 4 remakes. Oh it, my god. Megas. I, mega I can't megas. wait to see all those capsules in 3D. That'd be amazing. Oh my god, and the friend and the uh the um affection thing and all of that's gonna be great. Oh yeah, that's right. And more contests. Ooh, imagine the underground in 3D, that'd be cool. Oh my god, the underground over Wi Fi. Over internet. Internet underground. Yes. I mean, like, this is really when when really step into unknown territory here because Gen 4 introduced all the systems that we have upgraded today. Yeah, it introduced Wi-Fi and all that. Plus, think of all the shows you can have on your, uh, what what do they call the bottom screen now? Pokech. No, oh, no, down it, now? Yeah, like, it would, it, like oh, the Pokenav Plus. So oh, we would have Pokech yeah. Pluses. And think of all the shows from Jubilife TV. Oh my god. I love discovering how to like change the colors and everything back in the days. Ah, uh, so many fun things. It was cool how there was a calculator there, like for just random uses. Oh my but god. Still, it, oh, do you know? Every there was a type calculator. Every hmm? answer you get on the calculator, it'll play that Pokemon's cry of that number. I remember that. That was a secret oh, that was thing. Awesome. Yes. And and it was just so useful. Because having the, the health bar one and the, the, the oh, health yeah. bar one. Yeah, yeah. We always had that on. It, it just made the game so much faster because we didn't have to check. Keeping track of the amount of steps you take would be helpful too. Yeah, the step counter was great for hatching. The freaking, oh my god, the, the, the happiness counter. I'm going to look up the Pokech now to remember what the all of them are. The happiness counter was extremely useful. Berries and oh my god, it was also amazing. Oh yeah, there was a I cannot wait there. to go back to Sinnoh. Oh my god. <gasps> there was a memo pad. Yes, there was a memo pad. <sighs> and, 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 and. Legendary at the top of Mount Silver. Uh, not Mount Silver, of Mount Coronet in 3D. I would love to like, <sighs> if you can get, if you can get the flute to go to RCS, I'd love to experience the glass floor again in 3D. <sighs> good oh my god that'd be amazing uh as for the shinto ruins there was an event with an rcs a level one rcs you could get uh and the event would take you it would be a heart gold soul silver event and you would go to the um the uh uh ruins of alf and you would bring your rcs there and like you know how the ruins of alf are always the source of a lot of creepypasta because the radios the radio yeah. signal. Mm -hmm. You bring your Arceus there, and a swarm of unknown will flutter around you and teleport you to a different ruins of Alf. And you look on the map, and it says you're just north of the map. You're off the map, north into the into the ice. Damn. And you're actually between. You're actually between Sinnoh and Johto. And you find Cynthia there. And she says, welcome to the Shinto ruins. And you step outside, climb a mountain for a bit, and go into a giant temple with strange drawings on the ground. And you bring your Arceus there, and you can create an egg of any of the three title legendaries from that gen. Of a, of a Palkia, of a uh, Dialga, or of a... Giratina? Yes, Giratina. I keep forgetting. Um, and it plays a cutscene that shows real life photos of stuff. It, it you have to look it up. It's it blows my mind every time. I, I see it. seriously it has like I'm Hubble look space this up. photos, photos of gears and cars and telephone lines. And it I've has seen thumbnails of this. I didn't know if it was real. And and the most important thing is that there's a scene with these ring patterns. It starts with one circle, then it's a circle with three circles on <gasps> a circle. That's I saw this. Circle. I saw this somewhere. Yes. And it's more circles. Then it's triples of circles, and that's all the that's all the legendaries. Yes, I know. There's like so how many theories. Arceus created all of them to maintain order and shit. All the birds and, and beasts and. And oh, yeah. oh my god! Here's the best part. Unknown teleport you when you bring Arceus. People are like, oh, unknown are the thousands of arms of Arceus. It, it it blows my mind. That's amazing. I personally think that Arceus's thousand arms are actually Arceus's, and that's of all the thousands of 
read of universes and stuff like that, but that's all stuff for the super super mythologic uh, mythologic cast. <laughs> As if you're not. Um, oh, man, that was good. Oh, so anymore. many amazing events can happen in 3D. Yes. Um, any more hype, uh, Pokétheticals? No, but I would like to bring up the Pokéch again. There are so many things I just found out. I just remembered again thanks to this Wikipedia yeah. thing. And, like, oh, my God. Like, the way you got them with the Poké, the Pal Park and all that crazy I know. shit. Okay, so Pokemon list, friendship checker, dowsing machine was really cool. That was amazing. Fairy searcher is a meh for me. Daycare checker? I forgot about Fairy that. Fairy searcher was really important. Daycare checker, right. Oh, my God. I never used that because, I mean, I didn't breed back then, but that would be so helpful. Uh, you can pull out a Pokemon just the and right now time. imagine all these that don't look like they're on a TI-83. Oh, yeah. <laughs> imagine these on the bottom screen of a 3DS in actual good quality. Like the Pokenav Plus. And yeah. also keep in mind, all of the features from Kalos and from the Pokenav Plus will be on the Poketch. Yes, that'd be amazing. I did like the marking map feature, though, so I could just remember the different routes I have to go to. Yes. I had the marking map filled with every daily event. There were yeah. like five daily events where you could get berries and TMs and stuff. There was a coin toss app. Oh, the coin toss with the magic art. There is a move tester. That'd be helpful for noobs, I have to yeah, admit. Yeah, no, the move tester was great. It made me realize that water and dragon and steel and, oh, my God. I, I The way I memorized it from, like, when I started Pokemon, I just realized, like, oh, dragons are, like, the basic the basic starters, they're not very effective against dragons because dragons are all-powerful and starters, something like that. It's the elements, the four yeah. elements. Uh, dot artist, there's a roulette. Trainer counter and a kitchen timer, color changer, matchup checker. I, f I forgot what this is. I think that's types. Matchup checker. It's um, only distrib distribution. Of, um, the app checks the breed and compatibility of party Pokemon. Oh. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Now that I see. Stopwatch and an alarm clock. That's awesome and now it's not gonna look like it's on a tie <laughs> three that's, that's the best part all right um i'm sure we have more i'd love it if you can change would, uh... go ahead i just i just like to say like have you played fallout 4 no uh, i'm not yeah. interested in, in yeah, next gen so. stuff in current gen stuff honestly i i just don't yeah. have a lot of interest in it because it well it just... I, I like bethesda and stuff I know, it's just like, I, I, I don't have an Xbox One or anything. I played a PS4, it was great. But I don't have, like, just because something's next-gen doesn't mean that I am into it. Like, I have no pull to Halo 5, to Fallout 4, to any of the sequels in this current gen because... Personally, Halo not, Reach is my favorite. Halo Reach and Halo 3 were uh, just... Uh, Halo Reach was a sequel to Halo 3. It was... It was a sequel by definition of a sequel. Like, you could make a sequelitis episode about it. Because it changed things for better and for worse. And it started trends that led to some awful things. But it was different. But it was aligned with it. And it improved on things. Uh, just Forge. 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 Forge was one of my best Halo memories ever. Halo ruined Forge. Oh, my God. I did like the fact that you can snap items, but... I, yeah, overall they, they did ruin Forge. They took out fine editing. Why? Ugh. Uh, Halo Five just Halo Four just didn't make you want to. It was designed to make you not want to build maps. Like I was in a machinima called uh, Halo uh, called Three Four Three versus Bungie, and uh, it's an hour long movie machinima, and I play a role at the very end of it, um, made by Arbor Three Four Three and uh, Arbor Three Four Six and uh, um, uh, and uh, the other guy, and. It was amazing because it talked about how just like Halo 4 in, in satire, of course, Halo 4 is meant to turn everyone into an MLG tryhard that didn't want to build maps or play casual games and have fun. Oh my gosh, I and know. It's so true. <sighs> Halo Reach I, started that, but Halo Reach was still good. Halo Reach is like... Halo Reach had community maps and stuff. Halo Reach is like, you know how Anakin in the prequels became a dick and killed all the children and stuff like that? Like... 
Halo 3 and all those things are, are kid Anakin. And Halo Reach is just right before Anakin became a douchebag. It's like, yeah, you can see some dark side, but like, they're still kick ass. You know, they're still cool. And then they kill a bunch of children. Before his hand was cut off during the Clone <laughs> Wars. Uh, uh, yeah, mm. I, I just have no interest in Halo 5. I haven't even watched the story I, yet. I haven't played Halo 5. I just look at the ending because I just wanted to know what happened. It was pretty messed up. Anyway, I, um, uh, you know, I need to watch it at some point. Um, so, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this Pokemon thingy. Wait, I didn't even finish what I was saying before. Oh, what were you saying? In Fallout 4, you can, before, in the Fallout games, you can only change the Pip-Boy color to green, the common colors, green, blue, white. And the color changer, Diamond Pearl, you know how I can only change specific colors? Well, now in Fallout 4, you can choose between a hue of colors. So, I want that. Like, for everyone to have their own custom yes. color. Dude, That'd be amazing. They, could have, they could have character customization in Gen 4. They totally could. Bring it back. I don't care what you do. Change nothing. Just bring character com- bring customization back. back. We need something to spend our money on. Yes. Oh, my God. And Gen 4 is the place to do it because it's a modern, developed area. Yeah. It would have made no sense in Gen 3. And there were contests, too. The whole, like... Yes. It, y- buy outfits to look more better and stuff yes oh my god just ah like uh, it wouldn't it would have made no sense to have it in gen 3 gen 3 was so much about brendan and yeah May. it was just a little tiny pokemon contest um thing back in the corner yeah. of like that one city it was it was that that you know it was a developing region it was a tropical underdeveloped region but yeah. Sinnoh is full of cities like that is I know. a place to have fashion that's why i love it Oh, oh my, my god, god, can you imagine all the Megas of the Megas? Like, Gen 4 had Megas before Megas were cool. I want to... Uh, uh, there's no time to look at the, uh, the Pokedex of Gen yeah, 4, but... No, like, no, no. But Just like, to think about it... Magmortar uh, and all that stuff, they were Megas before oh, Megas were yes, cool. yes, that's right. They brought back, like, so many evolutions and stuff. Yeah, they were Megas before Megas were cool. So now imagine a Mega of a Mega. Uh, a Magmortar well, Mega. Well, there is a mega Garchomp. Okay, that's not a mega per se, but it is pretty still powerful. Yeah, no, I'm talking about like the. I'm talking the, about Magmortar, Electivire, um, shiny meta, shiny mega Porygon Z. Oh my god, it's just all so good. One of the vanilla maybe, Pokemon. Maybe even though. a mega Rotom. I don't fucking know. Yeah, Rotom's debatable. Rotom is cool. I will admit, Rotom's like cool it was because those... it can breed. Like what the fuck? Yeah, and it was that's just cool so to catch. I got chills when I like had to go into oh the mansion God. stuff. Okay. And the yeah. eyes. Ugh. That's 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 another episode. That's for creepy theory yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, goodbye, everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye. An hour or more. Yeah, I'm most likely not going to edit this. Just copy and paste. <laughs> yeah, but you will have to put up the images. Oh right. no, I will have to. Goodbye, okay. everybody. Bye. And, uh, Alice, I hope you appear on more Full Restore content in the future and I'd, TPT Network content. I'd love to do a podcast with everyone else, of your friends and Yay. stuff. Possibly. My legion grows. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and now we're going to cut the stream, uh, cut the recording, and then talk about weird stuff. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.